Call Halal Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Rivers turning to blood all over the world. This is an article that uh, re popped up on my radar just earlier, and I got all jazzed up to do a lesson about it. Um, one of the plagues that were prophesied to hit the earth, they're certainly coming now um, faster than ever. And rivers turning blood red is actually one of the more interesting plagues, I find. It is quite dramatic in a lot of ways. Uh, here we have an article that I published last month on my website. If you're interested in this content, you can check it out here, Hebrew Israelite Research Center. Dot org. Let's get into it. As the scriptures indicate, one of the plagues our ancestor Moses declared upon Egypt through Yahweh, our power, was the rivers turning to blood. The scriptures denote that these same plagues wrought on Egypt will be wrought on the heathen, in particular America, which is, the sp which is spiritual Egypt of the latter days. Revelation 11 and 8. Let's get that really quickly in the scriptures. I'll read a little bit. I'll take it from 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Now this, of course, as we know, is a prophecy that is given to us by um, John on the Isle of Padnos when he was in captivity there. And what it's discussing is a very powerful scripture because it's it's alluded to in so many, so many parts of, of the Holy Scriptures. In particular, Ezekiel 37 comes to mind. Um, but those dead bodies is a metaphor for the spiritual state of the nation of Israel in our final captivity, um, in particular in America. This was also prophesied by Daniel and many of the other prophets. Um, and it says, the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, and it is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt because it is of the same spirit, uh, many of the same idols, deities, practices, customs, back in Sodom, back in Egypt, are here today in full force, uh, just under sort of modern guises. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. Rivers running blood red all over the world. Psalm 78 and 43. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt, that's the most high, and his wonders in the field of Zon. And he had turned the rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. <laughs> you can't drink this water. Uh, and if you look at it, I wouldn't want to drink it either. I mean, who, who's going to drink that? <laughs> I think you're liable to get sick, very sick, deathly sick. Uh, verse 45, he sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them and frogs, which destroyed them. This is going into the other plagues. He gave also their increase under the caterpillar and their label under the lo under the locust. Anyone been hearing about the locust, play uh, locust plagues that are destroying agricultural establishments all across the globe? Verse 47, he destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. I just saw an article about that, actually. It happened to, uh, in India in particular. Verse 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evils, evil angels among them. So all of these plagues, all of this is being stirred up by the Most High, through his messengers, um, the angels. The scriptures allude to that in many sections, and this is one of them. Verse 50, he made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. Coronavirus? I mean, this is, this is all happening. All of these things are happening all right now, and on a scale and on a level that has never been seen before. It's actually quite refreshing it's actually quite refreshing, of course, if, if you're an Israelite that's coming back to your heritage, because this is the, the time, right, that everyone's been waiting for, the end of a final captivity. 
Um, verse 51, And he smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength, in the tabernacles of Ham. Uh, because the uh, uh, Egyptians were Hamites. And the Hamites back then, now we're calling them Egyptians. Um, verse 52, But made his own people to go forth like sheep, and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely, so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. Verse 54, And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them, and divided them in inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. So, as what was experienced in Egypt back then, the plagues that were set upon the nation, uh, uh, that was the set upon the Hamites in captivity, um, those plagues and that type of judgment will be happening again, uh, will be, and is happening again today. Uh, one of many, okay, this goes into one of many of the rivers turning to blood all over the world, Jamaica, China, Canada. It's been going on a long time now before, and there's just so many cases. Let's take a look at one of the videos below, and, and I wrote this in here. I wouldn't call it quite pink. One of the, you know, that's that's sort of the new quote-unquote excuse now. Anything to kind of uh, draw people's attention away from the fact that this is scriptural, um, you know, you'll read about all sort of different quote-unquote explanations. So, you know, the first big thing was, oh, it's, it's just a form of this red tide algae fungal bloom. Okay, maybe. Then the next one, and that happens like 10 times and people are like starting to catch on. Okay, well then the next thing is, oh, there was a, there was a dye factory or a chemical plant upstream, you know, or nearby and they were dumping that out. And, you know, that kind of went on. And then, oh, it was some sort of rust oxide or, you know, there's that one. But the thing is, it's happening in so many different areas, so many different locations, so many different conditions and circumstances that you can't just say, oh, it's a dye factory that's upstream and have people continue to sort of buy that story. Maybe in some cases it is actually a dye factory that's upstream, but when it's happening on a consistent basis, as prophesied in the scriptures, in so many varied and widely far apart places, you really have to question, what is going on here? Well, it's scripture and prophecy in action. So here we have Canada, Port Maria in Jamaica, Philippines, these are all viral videos, Russia, uh, Malibu, <laughs> that's... Wouldn't want to be on Malibu Beach right there. Uh, South Korea. Okay, this one they said it was the pigs being slaughtered in the river. That was blood in the river. At least they're calling it blood in this case. Uh, Africa. Well, where in Africa? Africa's massive. Uh, Congo. Gosh, there's so many of these. And what is this? I don't know where this is, but it's another one that is turned to blood red. Uh, Caspian Sea, place after place after place after place. Um, this was the article that I, that I just popped up on my, my, uh, radar again that, uh, inspired me to do the lesson. Creek turns a bright pink in Melbourne, Australia. Media is calling all of the rivers turning to blood pink now after exhausting excuses about al algae bloom, algae bloom dye plants dumping excessive red product and other chemicals to the point where it didn't make sense given the frequency and worldwide vastly different locations. It's called the sign of the times from the Most High. It happened in Egypt. Exodus 7 and 20. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Most High commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants and all the waters that were in the river turned to blood.